Hello Heavy Metal Men and Masters, I'm Heavy Metal Mama and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am doing a tag video. It is a super old tag video but I fancied throwing something a bit different in the mix. I haven't done a tag video for ages. I've been busy decorating our house and getting tattooed and dealing with the kids and blah, 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 and I didn't have time to make a proper try on video. They take ages to film. I needed something quick but I still wanted to you know get to know you guys so I thought that I would do 10 ungoth confessions it's high time i did this tag video <laughs> but before we get to that remember to like this video comment down below to discuss any of the things that come up in the video subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and thank you to all of you that already do hit that notification bell so you can find out whenever i upload and welcome so 10 ungoth confessions i am a bit of a an old bird now on the scene so it was actually quite difficult thinking up 10 things that i have in my life that are ungoth because you just start making everything in your life a little bit dark and spooky and so it was quite fun actually coming up with these i had originally written out all the answers to this like years ago pre-lockdown years ago uh and then i was flicking through my book trying to decide what video to do today and found this and was like yes yes i have to do this but we did have to go through and edit some of them because they there were things that I put in there that I don't really do anymore you know one was about doing baking competitions I haven't done a baking competition since pre-lockdown they're just they're not on anymore it's a shame but so let's get into my 10 ungoth confessions so my first ungoth confession is I have not read any of the classic gothic literature nor have I seen their movies <laughs> so I have not seen Dracula I have not seen Frankenstein I've not seen Interview with a Vampire I have not seen Sleepy Hollow I have not read any Edgar Allan Poe in fact the only Edgar Allan Poe I know is The Raven and that's from the Simpsons episode <laughs> quoth the raven never more it's just I like to read I liked to read as a teenager and in my early 20s I love a dystopian fiction I Dave Triffids is my favorite book hands down things like the death of grass that kind of thing but I have so little time now the last time I really picked up a book I read uh Caitlin Doherty's smoke gets in your eyes fantastic book but I think I read the whole thing while we were on holiday because it's the only time I ever get to pick up a book and the, pr the last book I read before that was I got about halfway through The Man in the High Castle by Philip K. Dick and he is so hard to read <laughs> so he's great his stories are brilliant on the second read but I've never finished that book and I have been reading that book now for about eight years so <laughs> never mind eh but there you are so yes I have never read any of the gothic classics and I haven't seen their movies over it just it's not what I particularly want to spend my time watching and that leads on to the next confession which is I don't like horror movies <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry love a sci-fi love a dystopian fiction love anything dark and quirky you know if there's vampires in it you know like Blade or uh, Underworld anything with zombies in it I love a zombie movie I love a zombie movie but as soon as it's a ghost or an evil spirit and there's a priest in there or something like that I am not interested I also don't like things like Saw where it's just gore for the sake of gore anything like that where it's you know we're going to cut off your legs and it's all going to be bloody splatter and that kind of thing not interested i don't mind that kind of violence in something like a criminal minds episode something where it's a detective type thing and at the end of it you know they get the guy i just seeing those kind of gross gruesome things it's it doesn't interest me i think before having the children possibly would have been a bit more into those kind of movies but since i've had the children i don't want to see that if i'm going to entertain myself i want to watch something that i'm excited by the storyline and i find but things with ghosts and evil spirits, stuff like that, they're outside the realm of possibility for me because I'm a scientist. I don't believe in ghosts. I'm sorry if you do. I, you know, no disrespect to you if you do. But I just find them utterly unbelievable, the concept that an evil spirit's doing it. So I just go, well, I've checked out. So I don't particularly like a horror movie. Love a sci-fi movie. Love Predator, Aliens, any of the 28 Days movies, stuff like that. Love it, love it, love it just not interested as soon as there's an evil spirit or a ghost okay on a completely different note i have never drunk absinthe 
I mean, I, I don't really like alcohol, so I was never going to drink absinthe. I had tequila once and hated it, and no, I get the feeling absinthe tastes even worse than that. So I have never drunk absinthe. I mean, uh, there's a part of me that's like, well, if somebody else had some, I might try a sip, but it's never been on my list of things I must do. Yeah, so I have never tried absinthe. And talking of beverages, I don't like black coffee or any kind of coffee really. I don't mind, I love coffee ice cream, but I would never drink a cup of coffee. Uh, and I don't like wine. <laughs> so <laughs> I have that awesome which way to the wine wine rack that Kate from Kate's Clothing gifted me. We've got it in our sitting room. It's full of wine. Me and Heavy Metal Hubby do not drink wine at all. I don't really drink. And if I do drink, I like beer and I might have the occasional glass of Prosecco or something like that. But, and I mean, that's only with my, my NCT mum friends. I will have two glasses of Prosecco. They'll drink two bottles each and I will be more drunk than them. I just, I just don't drink alcohol at all. It's just not my thing. And very occasionally me and Heavy Metal Hubby will go out and we will drink and we'll have three drinks of an evening and we'll be like, no, I'm done and I'm gonna have a hangover the next day from that. I certainly am not one of these people that's like, I'm gonna go out and have 15 vodkas not in the slightest bit interested and I yeah I don't drink coffee and I don't drink wine so yeah we give away a lot of wine because heavy metal hubby gets given a lot of wine on jobs that he does because he's an electrician and a lot of his customers will gift him wine and we just gift it to other people <laughs> but the wine rack looks very cool in our sitting room <laughs> I even bought cool gothy glasses to go in it so it looks amazing it never gets actually used in that you know it stores wine it stays in there until I give it to someone else we never actually open it <laughs> So on a completely different angle, I love the sunshine. I sat tan super duper easy. I love going on hot foreign holidays. We love going to Lanzarote every year with my parents. We have a great time. I'm not one for sunbathing. I would never lie out on a sun lounger and sunbathe. I slather myself in factor 50 but I love to be in the sun and I pick up a tan like that. Hence why I slather myself in factor 50 to try and stop that because it's bad enough as it is just being out and about in the environment. As soon as it's summer, I have to change my shade of foundation quite considerably. I, I have like six or seven different tubes of foundation because my skin color changes so much with the sun. I definitely inherited that from, well, from both my parents, but particularly my dad. He only has to step outside and he goes brown. Um, but I love the sun. I am not one of these people that hates summer. I, it's my favourite season. Love it. It's my favourite time of year. It makes me so happy when I can break out all the summer clothes. I absolutely love summer. Don't get me wrong, Halloween is great, but summer for me, it's just all that lovely sunshine. It brings me so much joy and I absolutely love being out in the sun. So again, completely different note. I, I hate spiders. I hate them. I hate them. I've got a couple of friends that have got pet tarantulas. I oh, I couldn't think of anything worse. Scott jokes that, you know, a while ago there was a spider in my car when I was I'd not long learnt to drive and it sort of did its way down trying to get into my lap. I mean, it was like that big in my car and he said I basically just threw myself out the car while it was still running, you know. I'm a lot better now, especially since the kids were born. I had to be better because I couldn't have them throwing themselves out of a car. <laughs> so <laughs> I am a lot better. Again, one of my NCT friends do's that we had, we were over at somebody's house and there was a spider like that in one of the toy boxes. And you know, I womaned up and got the pint glass and the bit of cardboard and I managed to get it out the window while the rest of them are all in the corner screaming. But I do not like them. I do not want them in my home. <laughs> no. I hate it when it's spider season. We have conkers in all the corners of our rooms. It doesn't really work. There's this brilliant spray that you can get for fleas for the cat, which has the added bonus of it kills spiders. So it's another great excuse to have a cat. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, not a fan. Don't want them on me. Um, Scott has a particular face that I know when he pulls this face, it means there's a spider on her. <laughs> Don't let her know. But of course, as soon as he pulls the face, I know that there's a spider on me. Honestly, the amount of times I have had a spider here or on my shoulder or in my hair, it just, it's into the double digits the number of times. I don't understand why they want to be on me because <laughs> I don't want them on me. But yeah, I hate spiders, but I do love like a spider web. I've got loads of things with spider web designs on them. 
I've got a cushion down in the sitting room that's got a spider web design with a little spider on. I've got cushions with little spiders on, but it's, it's that thing of if they're just what I would call a spider symbol, then that's fine. If they actually look like a spider, I, I don't I don't want them near me. <laughs> so I'm quite picky with spider things. But yes, I, I like the emblem of a spider web. I think it's beautiful, but not into the actual spiders themselves. So on to entertainment. I had quite the boy band phase in my, my youth when I was a tween, a hormonal tween. <laughs> Uh, and I have seen in concert uh, PJ and Duncan, Boyzone, Take That, The Cause, and Celine Dion. <laughs> she was she was epic. <laughs> And actually, Celine Dion, uh, I went to see that for one of my friend's 16th birthday. She wanted us all to go and see Celine Dion. I think I went to see um, Chura Satana like two weeks earlier. <laughs> so <laughs> it was quite the musical jumble. But yes, I have, I, I loved them all. You know, they were great. They were great. I'm not, I'm not ashamed of the fact that, you know, I love these bands. I would never listen to any of the boy bands or the cause now. I, I mean, Celine Dion, she is an artist. Her voice is phenomenal. I wouldn't go to a concert now. I mean, maybe if you were like, I've got free tickets, I'll pay for your, your, your train fare up there. You literally just have to appear and you get to spend the evening watching her because what a talent, but I'm not going to put her CD on, <laughs> put it that way. But no, I am not embarrassed. They were great fun. There was a hormonal teenage girl. These were safe boys that were jigging around in front of me. I, I, I you know, <laughs> had a great time. I am not embarrassed of my boy band phase as a teenager, but it did then very quickly move into my goth phase, hence why there was the, um, the overlap of going to see Jura Satana one night and then Celine Dion <laughs> a few days later. So I don't listen to what is called traditional goth music. I, I mean, I, the thing is, I find this a little bit of a funny topic anyway. When I was a teenager, if you went to the alternative club, there was goth music playing, there was metal playing, there was punk playing, there was ska playing, there was lots of different alternative music genres playing and we were all one group we all hung out together we were all friends it didn't matter if you were a punk you were still cool and we still chatted and it didn't matter if you were a goth we were all just the weird kids basically and it was just that thing of I'm not a big fan of this music I'm gonna sit this one out you know so I kind of find it weird when people are like oh you can only be a goth if you listen to goth music it's like I like goth fashion and I listen to metal what I don't really understand what the problem is. I was new metal in the you know the late nineties, early noughties. New metal was my jam. Now I like oh all sorts of metal core, prog metal. I, mean, I don't really know what you call it. Bimbo core. Loving a bit of Scene Queen at the moment. If you haven't checked out Scene Queen, go check her out. She's phenomenal. I just like metal. It's just what floats my boat. I just, I don't really get the whole thing with the cure and stuff like that, but no shade on anybody that does. I love the fact that we all got to come together and be these weedy beardies at the club. And I, I do find it really weird when people are like, you can't sit with us. You don't listen to X, Y, and Z. Stop being a dick, you know? <laughs> Sorry, but why can't we just be nice to each other? I, I find it really odd, this kind of gatekeeping thing. Let's just all be nice and friendly. You know, people were not very nice to, to us at school. Why would you want to emulate that energy? I find that really strange, but there you are. So yeah, I am not into traditional goth music. I like myself some heavy metal. Hence why I'm a heavy metal mama. <laughs> and so the next confession, when I got married, I wore white. Yep, I wore a white dress. Uh, it had purple on it uh, back in the, when was it? Nine, 2009? When did we get married? 2008. We got married in 2008. <laughs> we suck at wedding anniversaries, by the way. <laughs> yeah, we got married in 2008. Uh, I had a white dress with um, purple trim on it. It was by Alfred Angelo. They had a whole thing where they did their whole range of dresses. You could have the trim in one of like 28 colours or something like that. So my friend had it with black trim. Uh, another friend had it with navy blue trim. I know somebody else that had it with red trim, which you would think it would have been red for me. But back then my colour was like a Cadbury purple. That was my signature colour. And so I had the dress with the signature purple trim, but it was white. 
And to be honest, I did it because everyone expected me to get married in black. And I wanted to make sure that I shocked them. So I knew that the best way to shock them was to get married in white. <laughs> so, so yes, my wedding dress was white. It was quite a traditional wedding. I think if I was gonna do it again now, it would be a very different affair. I would have a huge black dress with a train. The main reason I didn't wanna get married in black was one of our um, colleagues at work, she wore a black dress. And they just looked like they'd gone to a black tie event. It didn't look like her wedding dress. It, I mean, it was a beautiful dress, but it just didn't give off wedding dress vibes. I think you could definitely do that now. The Haunted Bats wedding dress. Oh my God, her wedding dress, it was beautiful. Definitely, definitely gave off, the, off wedding dress vibes. But what was available to me in 2008 was very different to what you can do now. And I just couldn't find anything that was black or full purple that, made me feel right whereas this dress oh it was stunning it was stunning but yeah so I got married in white it was quite a traditional wedding my parents that was what they wanted they were paying for it I to be honest all I wanted to do was get married I didn't really mind so much like the food my mum picked it all I didn't really care I just said there was one dessert that I wanted I wasn't that fussed the things that we were fussed about like our D the DJ we got our friend Sideshow Matt to DJ it because we were very picky about the music which was great because he played all sorts of metal we got to mosh on the dance floor we had a crazy corner with hats and wigs and crazy sunglasses I've got an amazing photograph of my late nan in these dollar bill glasses these gold dollar bill glasses she looked hilarious it was just such a great time but yeah we had quite the traditional wedding I would do it very differently now but you know I also am not up for organizing another wedding somebody was like why don't you renew your vows and I was like no <laughs> so I did say to heavy metal hubby you the only way you're getting out of this is you die <laughs> because I'm not doing it again <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah yeah I got married in a white dress and my last un-goth confession is that most of my YouTube viewing, I would say 90% of my YouTube viewing is either food YouTube, so lots of food channels, or Reddit drama stories. You know, those kind of, am I the asshole type? You know, I love them, I love them. I either like watching food because I love to cook, I love to bake, I love new recipes are particularly Ethan Chabowski he is my favorite he is the one that I emulate so many of his recipes but I also love binging with Babish I love Josh Wiseman uh, I just recently found which I can't believe I've only just found it um you suck at cooking loads of great great food youtubers I love to watch people messing around with different recipes and I love those am I the asshole type ones two hot takes is my all-time favorite reddit type channel love it love it love it it's the kind of thing that you can put it on in the background while you're doing the cooking or that you're doing the housework or something like that so that I you know it's in the same way that people like to listen to podcasts and stuff like that I like to listen to these you know am I the asshole stories so yeah that is 80 to 90 percent of my youtube viewing with obviously some goth channels spatted in there but it is not my main viewing i love food and i love drama <laughs> so <laughs> i think because our lives are very very stable and me and heavy metal hubby we like to discuss the the particularly the relationship ones on these like drama channels because how do people put up with these? Why do people put up with these kind of partners? I mean, it's kind of saddened me in the way that there are so many women that put up with some awful men, some awful, awful men. But yeah, it's we, we're very lucky. I have a very normal mother-in-law. My mum can be a little cray-cray at times, but nothing compared to these stories. Heavenly little hubby is a flipping saint, I've realised after watching these. You know, we have a very a very good communicative relationship i thank my lucky stars <laughs> that i'm not in any way living any of these and you know we have fun discussing them and about you know what the hell i would say to these things i mean heaven my hubby was like you should start a youtube channel where we discuss them together blah 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 and i was like oh yeah but there's so many of them and you know are our takes really that groundbreaking but you know if you want us to do that let me know because it's you know editing videos is a lot of work so if you really really want one I'll do it but you know, <laughs> I don't want to do it and you guys go no we're not interested in the slightest uh, and the same with the food at some point when our kitchen is almost finished when our kitchen is finished I'm probably going to try out a few foodie videos because he keeps saying that I need to write a recipe book and become you know madly famous from food which amuses me greatly I you know 
I, I think I'm all right at kicking, but bless him, he likes to blow blow my trumpet for me. So, <laughs> you know, again, let me know if you would uh, enjoy that kind of content. Yeah, so those are my 10 ungoth confessions. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if you're horrified by any of the things that I have told you. I mean, unfortunately, I really struggle because most of them it's like, oh, I wear pink socks under my boots. No. I don't I've got one pair of pink socks that he bought me for Christmas once because he was like I'm really sorry I couldn't get you black fluffy socks but I knew you wanted black fluffy socks so he bought me pink ones they literally just stay in the cupboard unless the black ones are all in the wash I just not one of these people that's like oh, I've got Care Bear pajamas no everything's black <laughs> it, but you know so this was a little bit of a, a a trial trying to rack my brain to find these kind of ungoth confessions but you know I'm 40 I've been a goth since I was like 14 when you've got 26 years of choosing the black things it means that almost everything in your home it's got a kind of gothiness to it <laughs> so you know yeah yeah you too can live the dream with when you hit 40 if you've been doing it for 26 years <laughs> you know but yeah, let me know what you thought of this video down in the comments. I would love to hear your ungoth confessions as well. Please tell me, tell me, tell me down in the comments. I love having a chat with you down there. And remember to like this video, comment down below to discuss any of the things that have come up in the video. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And thank you to all of you that already do. Hit that notification bell so you can find out whenever I upload. And remember people, stay heavy.